welcome back. We are in studio here in beautiful downtown Rochester again, and we're going to talk some sports with Val. How you doing today? I wore the hot pink because <laughs> it's a hot time of year. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on. We've had a little bit of uh, shifting to do, obviously, with uh, some of the schools having some COVID issues. Some of the schools uh, now are virtual. Some of them are virtual with sports still going on. Some of them are not virtual, but they're not having sports going on. There's a lot of moving pieces right now. It's uh, almost almost crazier right now than it was last year at the beginning. And I, I think a lot of that uh, maybe is because there's been so much more normal stuff going on that now with this kind of rearing its head again, it's almost weirder than it was last year. I think so, because I think every school seemingly is, has a different situation, like you said, and uh, some kids are being contact traced, and they can't play, and so we're kind of taking things on a day-to-day -day basis, which you hear today. I hope that we're still talking about this, that these things actually happen. Right. <laughs> but I don't, uh, I can't promise you anything, but we're, we're up on stuff. We're, yeah. We've been following what's been going on. We can tell you about what happened in the past, so... Yeah, well, happened let's, in the last week or so. So yeah, let's talk about what happened in the past. We had a, a good uh, football week last weekend on Friday, and the Rochester Zebras started off uh, their home part of the season, week two, with a win, mm -hmm. twelve seven over the Knox Redskins. So something that they haven't been able to do since October of twenty nineteen. Uh, it was a really good win against a, uh, a nice three A school. Yeah, and you could tell how excited the kids were after that game. We were in the booth for that one, and you could tell how excited the kids were. And then I went down and talked with Ron Schaefer afterwards, and you know, he just credited the kids completely in their attitude and, and work ethic. And uh, I guess what was interesting, again, was just the, the ability to, to go back and forth between different defenses. And, uh, you know, I talked with Coach Schaefer again during the week, and he, he really, uh, you know, credited He goes, boy, that's a lot of late nights watching film and, seeing what the opponent does well and then trying to come up with a defensive game plan that that you hope will will be up to the challenge and you know a lot of watching you know Nate Basham the new defensive coordinator he's what a lot of the late nights watching film and you know getting it to work out and um uh, but again they they held uh Knox to 56 yards rushing mm -hmm. and this is Russ Radke whose teams have always been known for running the ball well and yeah. that was so big and you know, another play that uh, Coach Schaefer talked about that he thought was a big play was that fourth down stop in the first quarter on Knox. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of Rochester to take over on the Knox 43-yard line, and the next play they score. Yeah. Well, I think there's a couple things you can take out of that game is, A, after giving up 40-plus points against Southwood, uh, boy, they really have uh, solidified that defense. And B, uh, I think Alex Deming uh, is a pretty good running back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 200 plus yards, two games in a row. Mm -hmm. And I think the, I guess if you wanted to uh, see that right side of that Rochester offensive line is decent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you talk about uh, Marshall Fishback and Hunter Shriver, yeah, that's that's where they go when they need a yard or two or 40. 40 or 40, yeah. <laughs> First play from scrimmage, 43. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, not bad. That's where the game-winning touchdown in the fourth quarter was basically almost the same play. Right. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just goes to show you, if you've got a good offensive line and a good running back, even if you're maybe predictable somewhat, you can still make hay. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Rush didn't have one of their best uh, wing backs out of the wing tee, so it just put more of a burden on, uh, on Alex Deming, but he was up to the challenge. I think one of the things, too, with uh, with Rochester in the first half, uh, Knox was pretty much throwing the ball on them at will. Mm -hmm. And they, they tried that a little bit in the second half. I don't know if Coach Schaefer maybe made some adjustments to the yeah. to the backfield or what, but yeah, they Coach, were much better. Coach Schaefer raved about the secondary in the second half yeah. and about how you know they forced some incomplete passes when they really needed to. I guess that was a combination of both pass rush and pass coverage. Yeah, they were they were really good again because one of their best secondary guys was out. Yeah, and it didn't hurt that they uh, Knox kind of stacked up some penalties there in that uh, that one drive where they ended up with a first and thirty three. Yeah, yeah, the the unsportsmanlike uh, conduct foul was pretty big. I mean, mm -hmm. they went from first and it was and with a holding penalty on top, so instead of it was going to be like second and seven, mm -hmm. instead of went to first and thirty three. That was just 
yeah, huge in that case. Yeah, kind of killed that drive, mm -hmm. and, and that was kind of the last uh, last gasp there for the Redskins. Mm -hmm. and so Rochester going up to Whitco this week, 1-1 one and one on the season, and this is another really winnable game for the Zebras. Right. Whitco's coach, Chip Coldiron, has only been there for about a month. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to the Fort. I went up to Fort Wayne for the Northeast Indiana Media Day, and the Whitco table. You know, it was all these. It's like a banquet, and you know, all these round right. tables, and the Whitco table was just empty. Mm -hmm. There was nobody there, and so uh, we really don't know. This is really the mystery team in the area. What we do know is they're zero and two. They lost thirty nine seven to Prairie Heights. They lost thirty nine to seven to Peru. Mm -hmm. uh, they only had 150 uh, yards of offense last week against Peru, 145 yards rushing and five yards passing. Uh, they so they throw the ball maybe a handful of times a game, mm -hmm. three or four times, much less than Knox does. Uh, they had a fullback named Isaiah Kyles. He has been carried the bulk of the load through these first two games, but he left um, last Friday with what looked like an ankle injury. So. Uh, there was a kid named Tyler Veach. He led them with 83 yards rushing. He's listed as a tight end in their program. Yeah. So I think they, they're just kind of trying to put together a, something on the fly last week. And I think they found something because Veach averaged about eight yards a carry. So we'll see if they go to him. This is kind of a, you know, Kyle's more of a fullback type. Veach is more of a speed guy. Mm -hmm. So, again, I, I think we, we're going to say the same thing uh, about the Rochester defense against Whitco as we did against Knox, which is kind of they can't, even though uh, Whitco passes the ball a lot less, uh, Whitco is going to, if, if they're going to win this game from Whitco's standpoint, they're going to have to ground it out, you know, mm -hmm. three, four yards at a time, play keep away, you know, don't let Deming get the ball, try to win like a close, low scoring, you know, 14 to 7, 21 to 14 type of game. Mm -hmm. If you're the Zebras, it's, you know, don't let Veach get going for big plays and stop the fullback, and you got a chance. Yeah. And, you know, another thing, too, that was big for Rochester in that Knox game was they won the turnover battle, mm -hmm. which, you know, always yeah. puts you in a good position. Which so. they've done two games in a row now. Yeah. They, they even won the turnover battle against Southwood, okay. even though they lost the game. So, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a good sign. I mean, uh, you know, Coach Schaefer also praised Eli Swango. You know, we've been talking so much about his, old, his twin brother, but Eli mm -hmm. had a good game, too, defensively. I think. Yeah, you know, for, you know the, the, just the linebacker play in general is much improved. And Gavin McKee, you know, he started the year inside linebacker. He moved to outside linebacker, and he also played very well, according to Coach Schaefer. So the, the linebacker play has been much improved. And then, you know, on defense, it was you know uh, they didn't rotate as much on the defensive line. It was you know put Fish back and Beck on at the end spots, put the Schreiber brothers at tackle, and just say get after it. And they did a great job. Do we know if Fervida will be back this week? Uh, we think so. Yeah, so that would uh, be a huge boost for their backfield, obviously. Yeah, he'd be a boost offensively and defensively. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, it would be interesting. Uh, you know, a really winnable game up at Whitco on Friday. So. Right, I mean, this is a Whitco conference team. Game. Yeah, I mean, again, this is a Whitco team that's... They do start nine starters on... Nine of their 11 starters on defense are seniors, but, again, they've had trouble stopping opponents so far. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we'll see... Uh, but again, this is a Whitco team that's trying to find an identity kind of on the fly here, and it's, yeah. you know, Coach Coldiron got put in a tough spot. But uh, well, a little bit of a reverse of the situation going into that Whitco game last year, obviously with uh, Rochester, the situation that they had with the COVID, the school cancellation, and all that stuff going in. Basically, that week before Whitco was the five, the second five of their ten practices. Yeah. And, you know, they were just kind of trying to put things together on the fly with a young team. So, right, a, yeah. a little I, opposite. Yeah, yeah. I, I would imagine the Rochester kids remember that Whitco game and last year losing 28-7. I'm thinking, yeah, this is a team we, we can beat. This is one we want. So. Yeah. And once you kind of get that feeling, you know, it's kind of like basketball, right? Once you see the ball go in the basket, mm -hmm. once you get that first win... Uh, it seems like, you know, things are a little easier after that as far as, you know, hey, we can do this. We know how to do this. Let's keep doing it. It feels yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll see if they can do more of that. Uh, another guy Coach Schaefer praised was Peyton Luna, who's really uh, solidified things, offense, defense. He even, pra he even praised him for his uh, punt and kick returns. He goes, man, so, so often punt returners, they just let the ball bounce, and it costs them 20 yards. He goes, Peyton goes up, and he runs right up and catches those balls. And, you know, just catching the ball and, and a, as a punt return and then holding on to it, that's, that's something right. in, high, in high school football. 
Yeah. So oftentimes the difference between a twenty five yard punt and a forty yard punt. Right. A lot of uh, a lot of bounce time if it uh, if yeah. it hits the ground, and of course if you miss it, <laughs> yeah. then you're the uh, you know you're the scapegoat. But yeah. uh, you definitely uh, so, a good so many punt de- return. Yeah, so many details, little details that you mm-hmm. kind of. Right. Take for granted, but yeah, I mean that happens a lot in high school football. The punt returner just kind of backs off. He doesn't want to. Mm-hmm. Oh, coach will be mad at me if I try and catch it or if I if I fumble it. But mm-hmm. it's worth if you can, if you can catch it, it's really worth it to do it. Sure. Yeah. Peyton might want to learn the the yeah, way of the catch because there was <laughs> right. a, there was one time I thought he he was going to be decapitated, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else on Rochester? Uh, the Wabash game is scheduled for next Friday at home, and that game is still on for now. Okay. Wabash is not playing this week. They were supposed to play at Manchester. We'll get. We'll talk about later who Manchester is playing. Right. But Wa- they are not. Manchester is not playing Wabash. Wabash is out this week. Wabash. But the uh, game against Rochester for next week, the Wabash Rochester ne- game for next week is still on. Still looks like they're going to play at least as of now. As of as now. As of now. That's the way everything is right now. As yeah, of now. Yeah. So. Uh, Tipkinu Valley uh, improved their record to 2-0 and on the season after the uh, big win up at Wawasee in Week 1. They came back home last week and had a TRC opponent, Northfield, come in and won 44-13. So another good win there for the Valley Vikings and Coach Moriarty. Over 460 yards of offense for this Valley, o- for this Valley offense. They are just really rolling right now. and In a lot of ways, Valley's offense is the opposite of Rochester's offense. For Rochester, it was Deming, Deming, Deming. But for Valley, three different running backs with over 80 yards rushing. I mean, that's just how do you stop that. And in a hot night when it's 85 degrees outside and they're just bringing in a fresh back, Boy, that's in your north field and you've got less than 30 kids. It's going to be a long night. Mm-hmm. You know, Nate Parker has just stepped up big time. Five carries for 101 yards and a touchdown. Braden Shepard, 56-yard touchdown reception on a trick play. Jameson Virgil threw the pass. Mm. <laughs> really? And then a 54-yard touchdown run. Yeah. Uh, he had over 80 yards. Jameson Virgil had over 80 yards and a touchdown. So, uh, and he threw the, and like I said, he threw the touchdown pass. So this team has just a load of weapons and... You know, talking with Coach uh, Stephen Moriarty earlier in the week, he was like, you know, we, we talked about that's really this is really the difference from you know your your father and your grandfather's Valley football team. Right. They don't. This is not a three yards on the cloud of dust team. This, they're not. They're not trying to pound it out. This is a team with great speed who can come up with big plays at any time. I think they had something like four different touchdown plays of over fifty yards last week. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's saying something because I thought Northfield had pretty good team speed. So for Valley to do that, yeah. Really impressive. It was it was twenty eight nothing before Northfield scored. I mean, it was forty four thirteen. It was never close. And you know their defense has just been rock solid so far in the first two weeks as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And and they're doing it. With, you know, without Kyler Johnson, who's one of their better defensive ends, and he's out. He's going to be out again this week. But uh, boy, they're so they're just so big and strong on the defensive line. Uh, and then they've got the best secondary in the area, I think, when you talk about Shepard and Kirkenstein at the corners, Hunter Aaronman back there at safety. Uh, the, you know, they're, sec- they're so solid. Now, unfortunately, some injuries have cropped up. Joel Cisneros hurt his shoulder. He's out for the season. Mm. He needs surgery. So that'll, that'll hurt them at the... I mean, he's a fullback, but it'll really hurt them at that middle linebacker spot. But no, right. no Prater has stepped in and done a great job. So yeah. uh, we'll see if they can keep this up, but... Uh, yeah, playing really well right now. For some reason, the pollsters don't seem to agree. So right. they, they had him number seventeen after the Wawa Sea win, but then dropped him out of the poll. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Hmm. Well, they're going to be down at Peru this week, and this is going to be a game probably that the uh, Vikings have circled, uh, obviously with the Rochester game. But you know, this is one they kind of let get away yeah. last year with that twenty-one eighteen loss at uh, Death Valley. So yeah. I'm sure they're not going to be overlooking Peru this year. And that's exactly what Coach Moriarty said. He goes, we got caught overlooking Peru last year, and that really, uh, he goes, I, he goes, these guys have been really focused so far this week in practice. So we'll say they do Peru. I mean, they you know they lost in week one to Logan Sport. They beat Whitco in week two. They've got a senior quarterback in Levi Strong. They've got a sophomore in Matt Redker, who's a very good athlete. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's going to be some option elements to Peru's offense. So, mm-hmm. uh yeah, this is going to be the. This is going to be maybe. I don't know if it's as big a challenge as say Wawasi, but this will be a pretty good challenge for for Valley to see, especially now that they've got some injuries in certain spots. Yeah, 
Well, they just seem to have so many pieces on that offense that it's gonna, you know, it's gonna right. take a lot of points, I think, to beat Valley. Yeah, again, I yeah, at this point, yeah, I, I don't see, yeah, it's gonna be hard to just shut Valley's offense down the way the way they're going. Yeah. You wouldn't even talk about Branson McBriar and the job he's done. Yeah, they haven't really needed him to throw a lot of passes so far. <laughs> yeah, and they haven't needed Rex Kirkensen to catch a lot, but I mean, he's as good a receiver as there is in the conference. Well, when you got your uh, backs throwing passes and everything yeah. else, I mean, yeah, yeah. so. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of good things. You know, we've got a, a big game with Valley and Rochester coming up. It's not too far down the road here, about the middle of the month. So that, that's there gonna, is. Yeah, no, right. Like Rochester, this right? Year. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah, at, at this moment. Yeah, at this moment. Yeah, but you know, you look at that sectional twenty-six that Valley's in. Down is up, up is down. Mishawaka Marion zero and two. Jimtown zero and two. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we saw either of those things coming. Yeah. Valley's two and zero. Oh. Uh, Garrett won only two games last year. They've already got a win. Yeah. West Noble only won two games last year. They've got a win. Boone Grove, uh, excuse me, uh, John Glenn's got a win over Boone Grove and a win. They've got two wins. Uh, John Glenn is ranked number 18. John Glenn hasn't had a winning season since 2014. They're 2-0. Right. Under right. Uh, our friend Austin Faust. Yeah. So this is uh, up, yeah, in that sectional, uh, who really knows at this point? Yeah. Well, that's always been the trick, right? I mean, Valley's had a lot of times where they've had that really good season, and and then just that that sectional is so brutal. Obviously, you saw last year, you know, mm-hmm. with that game against uh, you know Mishawaka Marion. I mean, just tough, tough, tough sectional. Yeah. So yeah, now Mishawaka Marion, their two losses have been two two really good teams. I mean, they lost to Mishawaka, mm-hmm. and then they lost to Culver Academy. You mm-hmm. know, Jimtown to Northwood and Concord. Yeah, I yeah. mean, but but still. I mean, uh, yeah, Jimtown, I mean, you can't hold them down for too long, and probably the same with Marion. I mean, you look at those losses, those are big Mm -hmm. schools, 4A schools, both of them. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. You know, we got a long ways to go before we get to that point. Hopefully Mm -hmm. we can get to that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, Down uh, down the road, I guess, the other direction to the west, the Winnemac Warriors, Knocked off the Pioneer Panthers in a Hoosier North Conference matchup. First Hoosier North Conference loss for the Pioneer Panthers football team since the inception of the conference. This is its seventh year, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you know what's going to happen eventually, and, and you knew this year was uh, a little bit one of those uh, tougher years for Pioneer, obviously, with graduation losses they had. They've had some uh, pretty significant injuries, and then... Last week they had quite a few kids out with contact tracing. Yeah. Uh, Winnemac wins that one, thirty-eight to six, um, and it probably wasn't even that close, really. Yeah, you know, I talked with Coach Adam Berry earlier in the week, and he said that you know they had their their weekly you know captains meeting, and uh, you know they they reported back to Coach Berry that said you know what you know our confidence, you know we still think we can make some hay out of this season. We're not mm. giving up on the season yet. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, and uh, I think. There, there's really just a there's just a confidence that this defense has been playing pretty well. Mm-hmm. I mean, they held Winnipeg to ten points in the first half, but then again, they, their numbers are just so low. Right. And this is with contact tracing again. Coach Barry didn't find out about he'd lose as many starters as he did until Thursday afternoon, mm-hmm. twenty four hours before the game. So it was, that, it was almost one of those things. You know, they were so low. You know, do they still play? Yeah. You know, I in my mind anyway. So, uh, the, I don't think there's reason for despair from a pioneer standpoint, but they've got to get the fumbles under control. Oh, yeah. And a lot of these things are just the center quarterback exchange. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've just got to get the ball from the center. To the, if, they can, if they can execute that, mm-hmm. that, that seems to be half the battle at this point. Rylan Toloza, he's really running well. Mm-hmm. Um, Bo Mersch has been running pretty decently. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Logan Smith has been chipping in. You know, mm-hmm. he's kind of had to move. He's kind of moving all over the place, kind of a, you know, playing a little uh, wing back and a little uh, tight end. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so, you know, Brian Gluth had a catch the other day. Now they get Brock Robinson back this week. Good. That'll yeah. help. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, he's a two-way starter, fullback and quarterback. Uh, as for Caden Hill, he's questionable. Mm-hmm. So if they can get him back, that'll you like to think that'll help even more. Right. But uh, I don't. I didn't sense talking to Coach Barry that they've kind of given up on the season. But boy, yeah, the, yeah. the schedule just isn't getting any easier, though. Right, right. They go to Laville this week. You know, another tough road game, conference game. Uh, you know, 
Laville's been getting pounded around by Pioneer for a while in the right. conference. So. Fifty-two to fourteen in last year's sectional. We yeah, were there for that one. Yeah, so they, uh, you know, they're going to be looking to uh, knock Pioneer off for the second time in a row. Right now, Laville's coming off a seven to nothing overtime win over Triton last week. Yes, it was zero zero after regulation. Right. Laville also was hit by contact tracing last week. They had a bunch of guys out. Mm -hmm. So this kind of is, who knows what to expect. We do mm -hmm. know that Lucas Plum, we expect Lucas Plummer to be playing for Laville. He's only a sophomore. He, I thought he had a really nice freshman year last year. He got thrown mm -hmm. into the fire after right. an injury. Um, but he did well. He had 118 yards rushing last week against Triton. He had that touchdown run in overtime. It was the only touchdown of the game. I think it starts with him. Uh, when you come up with a defensive game plan because he's a threat to both run it and pass it. Mm -hmm. And they've got that other running back who we, I liked a lot last year, Paul DeWitt, mm -hmm. only a junior, had a really nice sophomore year last year kind of backing up those seniors. Yeah. Now it's his time to shine. You know, Coach Hausstrauser up there, you know, ever since he came in as the head coach, I mean, he has just completely done a 180 on that whole program. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it really went from, you know, every once in a while they'd have a good team to – Basically, year after year, they're finding people to plug into those places, and that's what those good teams do. Yeah. That's what the pioneers do. That's yeah. you know what those good teams have been able to do. Yeah, and we've talked a lot about it. The year before Coach Will Hostrauser got to LaVille, they were 1-9. and nine. Mm -hmm. His first year there, they were 4-6. and six, mm -hmm. Every year since, winning record. Right. Just I the mean, constant. Solid. Yeah. 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 And, uh, again, that's hard to do. Yeah, and again, they're just playing great defense, which mm -hmm. is, you know, they, they held on Bremen 14-12 to 12 in the opener, and then Bremen puts up 33 points on... South in Washington last week, so that's a pretty good Bremen. Oh yeah. yeah, pretty good Bremen team, and then they shut out Triton. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, and and you got a Pioneer team coming in that's only scored six points in two games. Yeah, you know, so defensively, Pioneer hasn't had a a problem mm -hmm. uh, for the most part. I mean, obviously, short field turnovers have created you know some scoring yeah. opportunities mm -hmm. for the other team, but uh, you know the offense has obviously been the issue and. Could we have another zero zero, you know, overtime game? <laughs> yeah, it might be. It might be. I, mean, I don't expect it to be a high scoring game. Right, right. The biggest thing, obviously, like you said, Pioneer. They just got a hold on the ball. Yeah, they've just had way too many turnovers in the first two games. Yeah, way too many. Yeah, and if you're, you're even if you're falling on a fumble, on the center quarterback exchange, it's a waste of a down. Right, yeah. right. I mean, they had, uh, you know, they didn't lose that many mm -hmm. i mean they lost enough of them but they they you know had enough of those fumbles where they were doing that yeah. that they still were able to recover but they lost it down and, right. and wasted you know five yards or better and if you get hill back you can put nickel eli nickel at that wing back spot and that might help out the offense as well just yeah i mean you, just as, getting, as, as the more weapons you can get on the field the better yeah and i think just getting brock back is just mm -hmm. going to give that you know solidifying force in the backfield that they need oh yeah because you, you've got to respect the trap and the belly yeah those plays if you're yeah. labelle but, boy, sectional 34, that's another section where down is up, up is down. Mm -hmm. Pioneer, 0-2. Mm -hmm. Rochester's got a winless last year. They got a win already. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, LaVille, 2-0, uh, looking pretty good. I mean, Lewis Cass got a win last week. They might be better. Mm -hmm. Bremen, are they... What do we know about Bremen? We know right. they lost to LaVille, but they got a win over South Bend, Washington. Is this the same Bremen team? I mean, I know they, they, they suffered it, some hits in terms of graduation sure. from last year's team, so... At, you know that that made it to the sectional final last year, so that that's that sectional thirty four is going to be interesting. The only team that got any poll recognition this week was Laville. Yeah. Well, that's understandable. Yeah, yeah. And Delphi, uh, bad news for them. Peyton Roth, uh, torn ACL last week, out for the rest of football season, out for all of basketball season. Oh boy. They hope to get him back for baseball season, which of course is a big deal at Delphi. Right. They made it to the regional final in baseball, but wow. yeah, that'll that'll hurt. Yeah. You know, and Delphi they lost to Carroll at you know in a big rivalry that Delphi Carroll game, always a big rivalry game. I think they call it the Bacon Bowl or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Carroll beat him nine to nothing. So Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of uh, hogs grown in the uh, Carroll County. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh yeah, so Delphi off to a one and one start. So uh yeah, that's that sectional two is kinda Right. We don't know who's quite really good. We know that yeah. We know that Bremen playing an NIC schedule will be ready to go once the postseason starts, but mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to know. Well, and, and you always have the injury bug to worry about. Mm -hmm. Now you have the bug bug to worry about too. Yeah. You know who's going to be able to play, who's going to be available to play. Mm -hmm. So, well, the other team out of that game we were talking about with Winnemac and Pioneer, the Winnemac Warriors, you talked to, hinted at it a little bit. 
Uh, they're actually going to be heading over to North Manchester on Friday playing the uh, Squires. Uh, they were right. supposed to go to North White. That game got canceled. Wabash was supposed to go to Manchester. That game got canceled. So they got together and let's dance. Yeah, I talked with Coach John Hendricks, and uh, it's amazing how quickly these things work. These, they get called at uh, 1 o'clock on Tuesday. North White called them at 1 o'clock said, we can't play. We don't have enough numbers. Mm-hmm. By 3 o'clock, they had a game with Manchester lined up. <laughs> took two hours yeah uh, there's apparently an email that's just kind of a mass email if you need a game you send it out and oh really to every like athletic director in the state and manchester was quick to reply and yeah the game got put together got put together quickly it's, it's like a it's like a tinder for athletic directors yeah, yeah. hey swipe right <laughs> yeah <laughs> manchester was supposed to have a home game so they had the refs already hired right. so right and Winnemac was a, a road game, so they Winnemac were playing on play going. Road. Yeah, they're yeah. going to get on a bus anyway, just going to go in a different direction now. Yeah. Uh, and a little the, bit more of a challenging game, though, I would say. Yeah. You know, I, I talked with Coach Henry. I asked him about the Pioneer game. Mm-hmm. And he said, I, I said, what was it like in terms of uh, condi- you know, your conditioning, especially in that heat last week? He goes, it was an 11 out of 10. Mm-hmm. And that's, <laughs> you know. It's pretty high. Yeah, pretty high. So yeah. that, and again, that goes to show you the depth and the. And, you know, this team, it starts in the weight room mm-hmm. with, with the John Hendricks coach team. I mean, it obviously it does with a lot of teams, but I think with Coach Hendricks even more so. I mean, mm-hmm. the, in terms of the, the bonding and the camaraderie and the, the conditioning, and the, it's, all, it's all there. And once you show up on it's, – it's already there. By the time you show up on Friday night, you're ready to go. And, mm-hmm. You know, uh, they haven't had a, a huge, like, passing game yet. Uh, well, so we'll see if they can uh, – even though they've got these weapons at wide receiver, they've really been doing it on the ground with, you know, Hayden Clark and Russell Compton. So we'll see if they can do more of that against this Manchester team. But I think Manchester's going to be more of a, more of a difficult opponent than North White would have been. With all right. due respect to North White, Gavin Ream is one of the best running backs in the TRC. And if you, if Winnipeg fans, if you've not heard of Gavin Ream, you're going to find out about him because he's mm. had some big games. He, he had a huge game against Rochester last year, and then he got hurt and missed about the second half of the season. Now he's back healthy. He had a monster game in uh, week one uh, when they beat North Miami. Uh, now Manchester did not play last week against uh, Bluffton, so they are they were facing the possibility of two straight weeks off. Now they get to play this week. We'll see what Ream can do. And the other guy that really impressed Coach uh, Hendricks is the wide receiver, Seth Gurdy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is terrific. I mean, he is fast. He can catch the... He's, he can be a possession receiver. He can be a deep ball. He runs great routes. And if he gets a step on you, look out. Mm-hmm. He is a big play waiting to happen. So, but again, that Winnipeg secondary is really good too. Sure. I think they might if they go, if Winnipeg goes man, they'll put Compton on them. Mm-hmm. If they go zone, you know they'll have they'll, they'll rotate a safety over to keep right. Gertie in check. But right. this is a pretty explosive Manchester offense. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see. Uh, it's it's going to be a good test. You know, obviously it doesn't have any conference uh, implications. Uh, you know, just a good test to see where you're at against a uh, pretty good two A TRC team. Yeah. And different, you know, different guys got involved in the Winnemac offense against Purdue. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've, we've been talking about Hayden Clark and Compton. Maddox Businski had a touchdown run. Mm-hmm. Uh, Xavier Holohan returned a fumble, a scoop and score. So mm-hmm. this is a Winnemac team that's a night. You know, the, it's not just one or two. We haven't seen Caleb Good have a big have a big play yet. Mm-hmm. Really catch a touchdown pass yet. I think that's coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is going to be interesting to see if the Winnemac offense can 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 make even take it a step further. Yeah. That'd be a good challenge. I, I I think in the in the long run, this will be a, a better deal for them uh, to see where they're at than probably going to North White would have been. Yeah. So, yeah. Like the you pol- said all, all, you know, due respect to North White, they've just been down on football for a few years. Right. And boy, the pollsters are noticing too because Winnipeg jumped up from number ten to number six in the polls. Yeah. Uh, t- people are noticing that. Yeah. You, you beat Pioneer. Yeah. A win at a win at Manchester this week and. Yeah. That's going to be big. Yeah, but it, yeah, it's it just something how these games get together. Within two hours, they knew yeah. they weren't playing North White and that they were playing Manchester. And Coach Hendricks said, "I didn't get to practice until the last twenty minutes of practice because I we had to throw the, the scouting reports for North White in the trash." He goes, right. "I I was watching film that whole time. I wasn't at practice. <laughs> I was watching film of Manchester trying to figure out who they had." Right, right. Yeah, that's the that's the other thing. You know, trying to do that stuff last minute. I mean, it's it's great that they can get those games, but as a coach. Ooh, I bet he's just pulling his hair out. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Uh, Caston, after the week one win against West Central, went on the road conference game up at North Judson. And, you know, they, they were hanging there for a bit. I, I saw the scores early. It, it, you know, they were right there, actually had the lead for a, a, yeah. a little bit. But uh, Judson just pulled away 42-12 and, and got the win. Right. Caston led 12-7 to after the first quarter. Judson outscored them 35 to nothing over the last three quarters. This is a Caston team that's playing basically with 20 kids. I think playing with maybe a little less than that last week. Not like that, but they didn't have their coach, Will Porter. Mm -hmm. And that really stinks because, I mean, you know, Cle Cleveland Browns, Kevin Stefanski come, tests positive for COVID, misses a game, and he's able to watch them win a playoff game from his basement on a probably a really nice TV set. Mm -hmm. Will Porter from Cast, and he tests positive for COVID. He can't coach, and it's not like he can watch the game from a big screen TV and, you know, call into the coaching staff and say, hey, let's do this and do that. Mm -hmm. He's kind of... He can only do so much. I mean, he's kind of hearing all this stuff secondhand, just like we are. Mm -hmm. So that, that I think that was the frustrating part. Uh, the bottom line, though, is that Grant Hickel has been playing great football. 80-plus mm -hmm. yards rushing and a touchdown, 12 tackles. He had an interception in defense. He has been everywhere. Sam Smith, another big game. He had over 90 yards rushing and a touchdown. Again, 170 yards from your two top running backs against the North Judson team who plays really good defense. Um, that's a good sign, and it's a good sign that this offensive line is holding up as well. So the uh, the Comets on the road again this week, uh, another conference game. They're going to Triton. This game actually is going to be played on Saturday now due to uh, the loss of uh, Cameron Fairchild, uh, who passed away after an auto accident last weekend, a senior for the uh, Triton mm -hmm. football team. So, um, you know, talk about this. You know, Triton coming off of a, uh, a tough loss last week, uh, you know, on the field, and then plus losing a player. I mean, Triton, you know, this is the second time in, in four years they're dealing with this. I mean, yeah. it's just in season, and you have a kid that's on your football team pass away, and boy, it's just I, I don't I don't know how you do that. Yeah, I don't know how you, yeah I don't know how you do that either. I mean, we you know this obviously we saw something similar at Valley that they had to deal with uh, again, but I, I, that doesn't mean I know how you deal with it mm -hmm. any better. Mm -hmm. They're gonna try and play a game. Um, this is a team that's pretty the Triton team is pretty young. They got a sophomore quarterback in Shively. They've got a sophomore running back in Anthony Shu. He's a fullback. He had over 100 yards rushing against a very good LaVille defense last week. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, how you strap the cleats on and, and go out there and play. Right. You know, Four years tough. ago they had to play Pioneer coming off. Yeah. And, the, I mean, again, you're, you're not only dealing with a tragedy, but you're playing one of the best teams in the state. Mm -hmm. You know, a team that would go on and win the state championship. I mean, that was – that put them in a very – you know, that's just – so much to deal with. Uh, we'll see how they do here. I mean, these teams typically play, Cass and Triton typically play close, low-scoring games. Last right. year, with Triton won 14-12. to 12. Right, late touchdown. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind, of, kind of thinking another close, low-scoring game this time. I mean, yeah. again, I, I, I'm not, if I'm, I'm not, I know Cass and allowed 42 points last week. I'm not too worried about their defense. Mm -hmm. I, I still think they're going to be, they're going to be fine. They got, you know, with uh, Smith and Schaefer, uh, I think their linebacker play is pretty good. Um, I think their defensive line is holding up pretty. You know, Caden Webb's holding up there, a little guy at the nose tackle spot. I think I think they'll be, I think they'll, they're holding up defensively. I think they'll be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but just uh, again, uh, it's going to be an emotion. Obviously, going to be an emotional scene in Bourbon on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, that's a uh, what they say one o'clock start. One o'clock. Yeah. yeah. So condolences again, obviously, to everyone at uh, Triton High School and the loss. And uh, we just hope that uh, you guys can find a way to move forward. Um, Culver Cavaliers did not play last week, will not play this week. Hopefully back next week. Um, but, uh, yeah, a couple of weeks of their season gone. Yeah, you just hate, especially to lose a game against Knox to the to the virus. I mean, that's always a big rivalry game. That's, you know, mm -hmm. you talk to a Culver kid about Knox and their eyes always light up. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's a Knox team that, you know, they probably had a shot to compete with. Yeah. Um, you know, and then the team they were supposed to play last week, South Central, now has missed, they're going to miss this week. So, yeah. And they didn't even play, so it wasn't like they got something from Culver, but uh, a lot of that, uh, you know, bouncing around right now. So hopefully the Cavs can can get back on the field next week. Um, gosh, I don't even know uh, who would they be. Is that Winnemac? Would they be playing Winnemac next week? Somewhere in there they play Winnemac. Um, 
No, I don't think so. No? Pioneer? I don't remember how. Now I'm just guessing, so. I don't remember where they you would be. Me. Yeah. You sure it's not Winamac? Yeah. Okay. I stumped Val. Okay. Hey, did you get that? I stumped Val. <laughs> I don't have Culver's football schedule memorized. I can't think of it two, three weeks in advance. But. <clears throat> I know they play Winnipeg pretty early in the season because I remember the year that I talk about all the time when we started with Winnipeg and Culver. That was uh, one of the early season games that I covered when Compton started his first start. So, I don't know. It may not be. Um, I think Culver's playing West Central, but I'm not. West Central? That could be, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we should yeah. mention, congratulations, I know they're a little bit out of our area, to the South Newton Rebels. Okay. Their 41-game losing streak is over. Oh. They beat West Central last week. Okay. To win their first game since, I think it was 2016, 2017. Wow. 41-game losing streak is over. That's, uh, that's a bit of a streak. Three straight 0-10s and, and then an 0-6 last year. Wow. South Newton. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a big accomplishment to to get off that schneid. Yeah. So. So yeah, but, but sectional forty one, you know, we we talked about sectional forty one kind of being kind of a, one of the weaker sectionals around. Man, you get Winnipeg it's number six, North Justin number ten. This is as good as that sectional has been in a while. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, any other thoughts on football before we move on? Uh. Big six A game this week. Number one Center Grove and number two Carmel. Last two uh, state champions. I believe so. Yeah, yeah that'll be last, a good one. Yeah, I saw that. So, if you're into if you're into big schools, who wants to watch a big school yeah, play yeah. football, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather watch a one A game myself. But. Yeah. So we'll. Uh, yeah. We'll, what do you mean, uh, guys? Aren't playing two ways? What? Right. Right. <laughs> uh, that's uh, you know that's always fun to watch on you know championship day because as you move up the ladder, obviously you see more. You know, as you get into 2A, okay, some, some you know, people are playing one way, and then as you get into 3A, there's very few two ways, and then mm -hmm. 4, 5, 6, you know, they barely even play, you know, they're starting to play positional stuff, you know, this is my nickel guy, and this is my dime guy. Yeah, and, very know. specialized roles, right, yeah. Right, right. So, it, for me, as growing up and playing at Culver, I never went out after I started my sophomore year. I mean, it, it really would, I was like, well, I had to go out. What's that? You yeah. know, I don't want to go out. <laughs> but uh, and Maconaqua is back this week. They play their first game. They play Northfield. First game of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that'll be interesting. Is that at Maconaqua? Uh, I believe it's at Northfield. At Northfield. So the the Norse coming off of a loss. Maconaqua coming off of three games that they missed. Yeah. Two games and mm -hmm. a. In a Scrimmage. Right, they're kind of the mystery team in the TRC. They're in their third coach in three years. They graduated Carter Little and Nolan Kelly. They were the two best players last year. Right. Carter Little, as good as any player in the history of McConaughey football. Right. I think they're all-time leader in rushing yards and they're all-time leader in interceptions. Yeah, yeah. Both. Right. <laughs> Not a bad accomplishment because yeah. they've had some players, especially yeah. back when uh, Grissom was fully op operational. Yeah. So, so yeah, McConaughey is kind of the mystery team. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll wrap it up here with football. We'll come back in a moment. We'll talk some volleyball and some of the other sports here on uh, Talking Sports with Val. Be back here in a moment. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 160,000 participants here in Indiana who take part in high school sports. First Federal Savings Bank can help remodel your home, consolidate debt, or even provide some spending cash with our home equity line of credit. Our standard home equity line of credit allows you to draw funds for up to 10 years and has no closing costs for qualified customers. Take advantage of this great opportunity. Contact one of our loan experts or apply online at firstfederalbanking.com. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. All right, welcome back here talking sports with Val. We talked uh, through the football and we're going to talk a little bit of uh, volleyball for the Rochester Zebras. Uh, you know, tough one the other night against uh, uh, Culver Academy. Really good. I mean, I'd have to say Culver's 
program. I mean, they, they looked really good. Yeah. Um, you know, Rochester got one in uh, the third set. We're really close to getting the fourth set, fourth and the fifth. Uh, the academy came back and, and won that one in four, but um, then they then they got canceled for mm-hmm. for a bit. So uh, you know we don't know how long they're going to be out for sure. But you know they were starting to put some pieces together. They're starting to you know really look like uh, you know some of the young kids are coming up. You know you, you got some freshmen that are coming in playing. Audrey Bollinger is is you know solidified her playing position. In the uh, Rochester lineup, uh, Kuskasekis, you know, she just really has solidified as the setter. So, yeah. you know, looking pretty good. And Emily Hughes had 20 kills in that match against Culver Academy. She was everywhere. Mm-hmm. And you can tell just the confidence that she's playing with. And oftentimes, some, sometimes the confidence, when we talk about confidence in a high school athlete, it's just kind of that not being afraid to miss. Mm-hmm. Whether it's in basketball, not being afraid to miss that open shot or not being afraid to take that open shot right. or... Yeah, she's just swinging with abandon, and you know, so teams have to devote so much of their energy to stopping her, and that leads to openings for other players like Bollinger, you know, like uh, you know Kenzie Bradley, Kylie Freya got a couple swings, you, mm, you know. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this team's starting to diversify itself offensively. Lexi Thomas had a few kills, so I think Lexi's really more kind of a blocker in mm-hmm. kind of this whole scheme, but mm-hmm. uh, that they're playing, but. Yeah, uh, it really stinks that they got a, they got you know the rug pulled out under them for a week. That's because uh, that you really want to want to see them keep playing, and keep right. developing that right. confidence, and they don't they didn't have a tournament scheduled for Saturday anyway. So now they don't play again until Southwood on September 9th. And what a way to have to come back! So because and remember the sched- the way the schedule was put together, there was a one week break between the Peru match and the Southwood match. Okay, so they could get ready for their our tribal, yeah. uh, so we'll see. But but by the time they step onto the court against Southwood, they'll have gone two weeks without a match. Yeah. Now, is there any kind of practice requirements for return since they've already had their? I, 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 if the whole team is that, I don't know. I I don't know, but uh, you know that's going to be. We saw that last year with the football team, you know, coming back for Whitco, and yeah. it, it's tough when you've been out, you know, not being able to practice. Yeah. For a while. I really think the the back row has really gotten solidified for the Rochester in the last uh, those last couple matches. I think Riley Holloway has really improved. The, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, just in the last week or two, Kylie Houston is so good. I mean, mm. she gets that pass right where it needs to go every time. I mean, Kuskusikas doesn't even have to move to get it. Mm. Um, Emma Sells has she has improved a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, even since the Pioneer match, which was two weeks ago, I think they've improved even a lot since then. They have, yeah. Kenzie Bradley is just really reliable now, and yeah. that's going to make a lot of difference, you know, mm. in the long run. Uh, Holloway had a couple of uh, digs against the academy on some shots that were, you know, cross quarters, and mm-hmm. she was going away and somehow got them back out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that was impressive. I, I really think that her, uh, even more than some of the others, her improvement has been really exponential she's just so athletic Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so uh you know that's that's where this pause is really gonna hurt the most is just because they have been improving so much and you know as as that peru matchup would have been nice to give them you know some momentum possibly going into the southwood yeah uh now for a while before Peru was in the conference, Southwood was always the TRC opener. Now it will be again this year for the first mm-hmm. time since 2014. Mm-hmm. So we will see how. Again, it's maybe not ideal, but boy, you get your your biggest TRC match out of the way right off the bat. It's gonna be interesting. Mm-hmm. You're gonna see what you can do coming off of a uh, little bit of a quarantine issue. So yeah, uh, the team in the TRC that's really kind of stood out to me so far has been Wabash. I think mm-hmm. we, you know, they graduated Mariah Wyatt and and Short and without. What's this team going to be like? Sure. Uh, they're playing very, very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the uh, Stumbo, mm-hmm. uh, I forget which Stumbo, I think we're talking about Jade Stumbo. They have two Stumbo sisters, but they're mm-hmm. both of them can jump out of the gym. They're, they're, they're very good. Northfield a little down. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, I was trying to work in some new players uh, pretty young. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think Southwood will be there in the end. Mm-hmm. But uh, the other team we're going to be talking about in the TRC, yeah. Team in Akron. Yeah, um, Valley. State of 19. I think Valley's playing very good volleyball right now. Got a nice win at Peru the other night. Lost the first set, came back to win it in four. Mm-hmm. 
And, you know, this is just a solid volleyball team. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you know, do they have, you know, the, it's not one hitter. It's who's just, and it's not who's just stealing the show. It's like four different hitters. It's Ava Smith. It's Mallory Durkis, it's Bree Sheets, it's Colette Blackburn. Mm -hmm. You know, defense, you know, setter, Macy Kirkenstein has really stepped into that role and looked pretty comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, Abby Cook looks good uh, as well. And then the back row, you know, you got Braden Bainey. Uh, this is just a team that's just a solid volleyball team. Yeah. You know, Coach Durf has really uh, done a nice job there. You know, they were supposed to go to Manchester last week for a tournament. That got uh, wiped out, unfortunately, but, you know, able to, to bounce right back and, and get that win over Peru. We're taping this uh, Thursday afternoon. They're going to McConaughey Thursday night. Mm -hmm. So by the time you've seen this, you'll know what happened. It's going to be varsity only, 6 mm -hmm. o'clock start. McConaughey, again, we don't really know. Right. Uh, suffered some graduation losses last year, and they haven't played yet this year. So, yeah. But, you know, Valley with a chance to start a 3-0 in the conference. They've already got wins over Whitco and Peru. Yeah. So they can beat McConaughey. <clears throat> they beat them last year. You know, McConaughey will be out for revenge this time. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about Valley a lot with, uh, you know, who they graduated last year and how young they were with a new coach. And, boy, they've just put together quick here. A uh, really nice start to the season. Yeah, I just uh, a lot of different just a lot of different parts. You know, mm -hmm. Emily McGriff is another girl. I mean, very good middle blocker. I mean, this team is just a – they play solid, solid volleyball. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't beat themselves. Good team. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who's your north action? We saw, um, you know – Cast or uh, Arga, I'll get to the school I'm thinking of. Culver, I actually went. Mm -hmm. So Culver and uh, Winnemac played the other night, and that ended up going five. Winnemac come uh, came back in the fifth set. Uh, you know, Culver had put, went on a huge run. Ten, I think ten zero is what uh, Justin was saying, mm -hmm. and made it fourteen ten, fourteen eleven, something like that. And then Winnemac was able to come back and win sixteen fourteen and, and take it in five. That's a big win for uh, for Coach uh, Caston. A great win for Coach Caston at Winnemac and a tough, tough loss for, for Coach Barron at Culver. That would have been, for them to win a conference match, that would have been a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, this Culver team is really, I mean, you can tell, though, they're, they are not to be taken lightly. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they've got, uh, you know, you know Chloe Dante is a setter. Uh, Bryn Barron's helped out with the setting. You know, Grace Sieber, she was kind of a setter last year. I think she's moved off to maybe more of a kind of a, rotational role you know Avery Garland is another sophomore has been playing well Alina Pizer in the front row you know Culver's playing pretty nice you know and uh uh Megan Pearl I mean she's been really she's been really mm -hmm. you could argue she's been the MVP of the team mm -hmm. I mean she gets a double double every night and kills and digs I mean she is everywhere mm -hmm. and then uh yeah, Taylor Darnell doing a very good job in the back row so but boy, a win there would have been so big for them, mm -hmm. and against the Winnipeg team that had been struggling, yeah, it would have been great. I mean, Culver's played all these five set matches this year. I mean, they they beat West Central in five, which was a really good win at mm -hmm. West Central. Mm -hmm. They won at Lacrosse, which was a really nice win against mm -hmm. a sectional potential sectional opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a win over. They've split two matches with Oregon Davis this year, right. but the you know the the OD the first OD match went five. So. Right. And that's a sectional opponent. So this is a team that's playing a lot more competitively, but boy, that would have been great if they could have won a conference match. From Winnemac's standpoint, boy, what a great win for them. I mean, they, they had match points against, pulled that one out. Right. And this is a team that's been struggling to find just some sort of chemistry. They've had quarantine issues. They've had just non-COVID related illness issues. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I saw them in North Miami, they had seven players available. They were up to about 10 when I saw them play at Valley. Just trying to get their full complement players back. You, they get uh, Lauren Friedel back. I, I haven't seen Lauren play in person this year, but getting hurt, she's six feet. Mm -hmm. Getting her another some height down there in the front row, that's going to mean sure. a lot because that will take some some of the burden off Alyssa Villanueva, who's really carrying a lot on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been it's been tough going for Coach Caston to get started this year with with everybody out and. Of course, you know they had some graduation losses from last year as well. You know mm -hmm. that you know you're you're losing some size and and a lot of different uh, pieces with uh, the Gearhearts and and everything graduating. Yeah. So, you know it, it's a uh, it's a tough start for them, but that's a that's a big win, especially when you come back from from fourteen, I think ten or eleven, and uh, pull out that win. Kaya Campbell, Kaya Campbell, we got to give her a shout out. She just is everywhere, setting, just digging everything. I mean, mm -hmm. she has been playing really well, and then you've got some young players, Reagan Caston, uh, mm -hmm. Chloe Roush. I, I, I liked what I've seen from her as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Coach Caston is she's 
kind of experimented with the two setter system, kind of gone back and forth between the two setter system and just having Kaya. Uh, you know, McCloy Roush can set if needed, but I think she, I think uh, Coach Cast likes her more of a, a, a different rotate, different role within the rotation. So uh, again, just trying to figure out what roles are moving forward. Mm -hmm. You said uh, Coach Cast, and let's yeah, and they've got another big con you know you get a big conference road win at Culver. Now you got another big one on Thursday night when they travel to Knox. Yeah. So again, that will probably have happened by the by the time you see this, that match will will be over. But yeah, that's a that's another one of those uh, teams that you know it's it's a winnable game, mm -hmm. but they're you know also a pretty good sized school and they've got some size on their team too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Um, you know, you mentioned Coach Caston, so that kind of segued me into the thought of, you know, Caston. Uh -huh. um, you know, they've had kind of a, a, a rough start. I mean, they've, they've gone to some tournaments, and, and, you know, they went to the Tomahawk and came out, I think, with one win. They went, uh, I forget where they were last week, Carroll, maybe. They went to Tri-County. They went Tri one and three. Yeah, they, they went one and three. Uh, just a tough day. They lose to Tri-County uh, in three then they get a really nice win over North White, a North White team that's usually pretty solid, and they mm -hmm. beat them in three. And then they lose to front, a very good Frontier team. Mm -hmm. you know, that was a Frontier team that lost to LCC but took a set off LCC. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good out Frontier team, and then they lose to North Newton at the end of the day. So yeah, tough. But then they bounce tough day. But then they bounce back and they beat Argus the other night, 25-11, uh, 25-7, 25-11. Uh, so this is a team, the casting team, that's been up and down. Uh, they've got. You know, they're, they're, Kasten's going with a two-setter system. Coach Schultz is going with a two-setter system. When you talk about uh, Annie Harsh and Delaney Lowry, but of course, this team's just got a lot of, you know, they've got a lot of firepower when you talk about Maddie Smith and Isabel Scales. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they have been playing great. And then, you know, Addison Simpleman in the back row. So they're, it's a pretty solid team, uh, but they've just they've got to find a way to win these, pull out these close matches. Yeah. The, uh, the game last week with Pioneer had uh, got moved back a, a few weeks. To September 16th, yeah. yeah. So, so the, two more weeks for that. Yeah. Um, the Pioneer Panthers uh, had a big game the other night against Logan Sport. They took them yeah. in three. You know, uh, Haley Tumain is the uh, new coach at Logan. She was obviously part of uh, Coach Nye's uh, you know, volleyball club, plus also coached at uh, Pioneer. So that was a big win uh, for them. A little bit of a tough day on Saturday at LCC. They went two and two on the day. Yeah, uh, they've lost three times already this year. Yeah, they that's lost all they three. Lost they lost last three year. times all of last year. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't be too concerned yet. I mean, no. they did lose to LCC at the LCC tournament, which mm -hmm. will be interesting. Should they run into LCC at the semi state? But that's a long way away. Mm -hmm. um, I think this Pioneer team still, they've got a long way to go. They've got, you know, Mackenzie Rogers has just really stepped up. Mm -hmm. I mean, she and Kirsten Nyes gives them two setters, and then uh, we're really good. Mackenzie Robinson is just playing great volleyball in the back row for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, um, and, you know, in terms of offense, obviously with Haley Kripe, I mean, they you know, they they have their go-to player. Who mm -hmm. They can go, and then, but she's not the only one. I mean, Weisenberger, you know, uh, I mean, they've got so many weapons. Mm -hmm. I think you know when we saw in that when we saw when they lost that set to Rochester, and I think what maybe has kind of popped up occasionally has just been the that passing that serve serve receive. I think if they can receive serve well, I think that the the offense will be fine, will be more than fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's kind of been what's what, what's been their downfall. Now again, their three losses are to Zionsville, North Central. <laughs> School with what over two thousand students in Indianapolis mm -hmm. and LCC. Mm -hmm. I mean, no reason for again, no reason for despair yet. Right. Well, and, and you you still, I mean, you you overlook it because it's Pioneer, but you still got to think. You know, they they lost three, you know, starters that were just huge. You know, you talk about uh, Joe Walker in that back row. You right. talk about uh, your setter in uh, in uh, Brooke, and then you talk about you know Blickenstaff and, and right. You know, you know, and talk about three of the best athletes in the area, but three of the smartest players you'll ever have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're the three players you never have to worry about. Yeah, I've been I've been really pleased watching uh, Rogers. I think she does a really good job, and and like you said, it's just you know if you can get that set from a you know not having to scramble, it makes a, a huge difference. So that first pass is is key, and they have been struggling a little bit in the back row, and uh, you know. 
the other night, and then the Vosky yeah. came in. You know, they, 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 it seems right. like they keep putting people in, and, and she right. came in and she served uh, like eight or nine in a row. I mean, mm-hmm. it, was, it was almost like, hey, put some ice on that after you get done, kind of thing. But uh, you know, they keep yeah. coming in with different people and yeah, and Coach Nye, different yeah. things. Coach Nye has praised Emma Navasky's serve. She he goes, that it doesn't look like it's coming at your heart. It's going all over the place. Mm-hmm. It is a nightmare to try to return and. Yeah, this this team serves very aggressively, and that mm-hmm. that will help them in the long term. Yeah. Uh, again, we're airing this. We're taping this on Thursday. They're at Northwestern Thursday night. That is going to be a really good match. Mm-hmm. Pioneer beat Northwestern in four last year. This is a Northwestern team that returns most everybody from last year's team. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is a Northwestern team that won the Tomahawk Invite, which was a twelve team tournament already. Uh, they will be ready to go, and that is going to be a very interesting match. An undefeated. Yeah. So far this year. Yeah, they are yeah. good. Yeah. This will be. It'll be more of a challenge than mm-hmm. Logansport. Oh yeah, and you know just the size across the front line, obviously with McKenna Layden, you know six two, and there's some other girls that they have that have some size as well. So, yeah, it's it's going to be a challenge. We'll see how that goes down at Northwestern. Yeah, Kennedy Corn. We need to talk about her. She's been a, a force in that front row as well. One of the great mm-hmm. blockers in our area. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Brooklyn Borges. Yeah, yeah Borges is uh, having a solid year, and and I even thought that uh, you know Bell Blickenstaff uh, was doing some good things against Logan Sport. Mm-hmm. So. You know, there's there's just so many players. I mean, when you have that much depth, and you know, there's there's so many players on that team that don't get as much playing time as you know maybe they would at, at a different school. It's, it's yeah. just yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, this girl is you know right. a really good player too. It's, yeah, you think of one A volleyball, the word deep isn't the first word that comes to mind, but this yeah. pioneer team is deep. Oh yeah, really deep. So there's there's some sophomores on that uh, JV team that would be playing varsity for a lot of schools. Mm-hmm. Really. Um, yeah, so, is that everybody? Yeah, volleyball wise? Uh, around the horn? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So, so uh, let's take another quick break. We'll come back, we'll talk some, uh, some soccer, some tennis, and some golf. And cross country. Sure. Yeah, when we get back, talking sports with Val. The Winning Edge is your local provider for all your sport and school athletic needs. From providing customizable sportswear to engraving trophies, the Winning Edge strives to help teams find their edge on the playing field. Call 574-223-6090 or visit their website at www.thewinningedgeathletics.com. Steve Moore Agency has been proudly providing comprehensive insurance solutions all across Indiana since 1974. Whatever your insurance needs are, Steve Moore Agency will create customized insurance solutions to guarantee complete protection of all your assets at an affordable price. Call now at 574-223-3010 to see what Steve Moore Agency can do for you. Welcome back here. We're talking sports with Val. We're going to change it up just a little bit here since uh, you've been all over the uh, tennis courts this week. Yeah. And seeing a lot of tennis. We're going to... Not the U.S. Open, but yeah. the next best thing. Yeah. So uh, I saw the Rochester Zebras uh, tennis team doing uh, fairly good this year so far. Yeah. Off to a nice start. They're 4-1. and one. Now, again, we're taping this on Thursday. They're going to Peru Thursday at 5 o'clock. That will be Ooh. their by far their biggest challenge. Sure. Peru went undefeated in the con- won the conference last year. Went undefeated in the conference. Won their won their sectional. Uh, you know, Coach Mike Sane is the coach at Peru. He is kind of Jesse Atkinson's mentor. Remember, Jesse taught at Peru for a year or two, mm-hmm. and uh, learned kind of learned under Coach Sane and has kind of developed his program at Rochester, kind of with that in mind. And you know, Peru is just very solid every year. But this is a Rochester team that's. You know, it's interesting, both Rochester and Valley have no seniors, so we're going to get used to these kids for at least a couple of years, mm-hmm. and hopefully, and, uh, you know, Rochester, the, you know, they beat North Judson the other night, 4-1, to one. Uh, they have now beaten Knox and North Judson, those are two of their sectional opponents, so that is a very good sign, Yeah. Uh, their other sectional opponent is Culver Academy, which sure. they don't play during the regular season, and they've dominated the sectional for, what, 17 years in a row, that's... Oh, yeah, by the way. But, right. <laughs> that's a good sign that Rochester has these wins. Uh, you know, the North Judson match was interesting because Rochester hadn't played uh, basically in about a... Their doubles teams hadn't played in a week and a half. Right. Um, just kind of the way the schedule worked out. And then uh, the McConaughey match got uh, moved. 
had a, uh, what, LaVille that only had one match? Right, LaVille, right, LaVille only had one player. By the way, the one player has been contact traced, so... Oh. Poor Laville, they don't have yeah. a team. They yeah. were supposed to play Valley on Thursday. That match was canceled. Poor yeah. kid. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so the only player that, pl that had played in the last week and a half was Drew Strasser. The other six guys hadn't played at all. Mm -hmm. So what would they be like? And I, I asked, you know, they, but they won four to one, you know. Uh, Braden Zink won at one singles. Uh, Drew Strasser won at three singles. The one doubles team, you know, Cody Smith and Tanner Reinerts looked good. They won. Uh, Robert Bazo and Jake Freeman won at two doubles. And I asked uh, Coach Atkinson afterwards, was your team rusty? He goes, oh, yeah, we were really rusty. But, again, they did a nice job. And, you know, uh, part of it, too, is just, you know, and it's not just rust, but it's kids in new spots. I mean, this one doubles team is a whole new team with, you know, Tanner Reinhardt is a freshman. He's playing with Cody Smith. And they hadn't teamed up before. And, you know, they lose the second set against Judson. But they come back and win the third set 6-1. And, you know, that was, you know, uh, you know, you know, Coach Atkinson just kind of gave him a pep talk, like, you've got to take it to them. You've got to be the aggressors here. Mm -hmm. And they did, and that's a sign that, you know, that they're kind of learning how to win, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But this is a team that's pretty pretty athletic, I think. Yeah. You know, Brock Bauer suffered a tough loss at two singles, but I think he's, you know, he's, and again, he's a guy in a new role. He's played, he played doubles with Kyle Reinhardt last year. Now he's moved up to singles. Yeah. yeah that's a big, that's a big adjustment. Yeah. It really is, so... Uh, especially when you're used to playing with Kyle, because I mean he can cover a lot of space. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, and uh, you know Braden Zink looked really good. You know, I mean he 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 won pretty easily. So th this is a team, and you know they beat Knox 5-0 at the John Glenn tournament a couple we you know a week and a half ago. I mean they they dominated all five of those matches. So this is a Rochester team that's pretty good and pretty promising. Yeah. Uh, you know, because it's a team you're going to get to get to know for two years. Yeah. At least. Yeah, and we'll see how they do against Peru. Obviously, like you said, they're you know, the cream of the crop when it comes to uh, tennis and the TRC, so yeah, I mean, challenge. Yeah, Ian Potts, there's Peru's number one. He's probably the best player in the conference, the right. best individual player. So, yeah, I mean... When I know when I know his name, yeah. you know he's probably pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, you know, Rochester's, uh, you know, you know their, their only loss was to a pretty good John Glenn team on John Glenn's home courts. I mean, the, this is a team that's got a lot a lot to play for, a lot ahead of them, uh yeah. But again, you have to think Peru is the favorite in the conference, and they know, oh, yeah. and you know Manchester will be good when yeah. they get around to playing them. Yeah. And so you, you know, you talk conference obviously because we don't have a ton of uh, tennis being played. But uh, uh, Coach Kendig, uh, we we kind of thought you know coming into this with uh, you know the graduations that he had, yeah, hey, it's going to be a big re rebuild year. But mm -hmm. they've been playing really well over there. Yeah, it's interesting. Rochester's only played five matches and they're four and one. Valley has played ten matches. So they're five and five. Yeah. Uh, they played to play three game, three matches in a row this week. They lost. Uh, they beat Man. They beat Mishawaka on Monday, three two. They lost to Peru five zero on Tuesday. And we talked. We talked about how good Peru is. Mm -hmm. Then they bounced back and get a nice four to one win over Knox on Wednesday. They were supposed to play Laville on Thursday. Again, we said well, that's that not happening. Four. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you got Dylan Neese, Cam Manuel, and Wyatt Ryder playing one, two, and three singles. You know, Wyatt is a really nice three number three player. He's he's a guy who just keeps the ball in play, and he's he's. he's equally as comfortable hitting a backhand as he is hitting a forehand, which you don't always see. Um, you know, I talked with Dylan yesterday. He said, you know, he, he, I played tennis every day during the summer to get ready for this, and you can really tell, you know, he's really got a nice, smooth game. He goes, he travels over to Wawasee to, a, to like, some tennis academy that got him got him ready. He goes, that, he goes, I play a lot with my dad. <laughs> he goes, I said, is your dad a pretty good opponent? He goes, well, he's decent. Yeah, <laughs> but Dylan, yeah, Dylan's a fun kid. Of course, Dylan Dylan plays basketball too, so he's got all that to balance. But yeah, Cam Manuel's another kid who had a nice, you know, he had a nice bounce back win against Knox after a couple tough losses earlier in the week. Uh, and then you know the one doubles team, Anakin Pettit and Cooper Walls, kind of the odd couple. Anakin's you know big, tall, mm -hmm. you know strapping kid, loves playing in the net. And you got little Cooper who's got a great serve and can really play at the baseline. While well, it's you know really nice pairing there. Mm -hmm. And you know they've been playing with uh, Brady Minix and Tristan Reagan at two doubles. Yeah. So uh, actually, they had to move uh, Ryder down to two doubles, so due to some issue, health issues, so so everybody could play. But yeah, they they were still able to beat Knox four to one, and the one loss was a default. Mm -hmm. They didn't lose any matches on the court. So yeah. yeah, it's a nice team. It's a talented team. You know, Coach Kendig is has uh, put that work ethic in the team. And, and you know, it was interesting. He was talking about you know. The Mishawaka match, they won 3-2 to two the other night. The the two doubles was a default. Valley won that match by default. Because mm -hmm. Mishawaka didn't have a two doubles team. And I thought, 
Well, from where you, I, from where you were, Coach Kendig, I asked him that like, isn't this something? Because when he started, they only had three guys at Bally. Right. Now they've got nine. Right. And it's they're, Mishaw- not, they're not giving up games to default. They're getting them. Right. And it's yeah. Mishawaku who's having to default matches. So yeah. that, that's a good sign. Yeah. That is a good sign. But, he uh, he does pro- a good job. Yeah. But the problem is, is that you know they've lost to Wawa C5-0. They lost to Columbia City 4-1. to mm-hmm. And those are the two teams in their sectional that they might have to run into. Mm-hmm. They don't play Warsaw during the regular season, but you know they'll be good. So. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just another you know problem, I guess, when you get up in the 3A range. Mm-hmm. You get into some really, really talented programs that have a lot of uh, depth. Yeah, yeah. So, well, let's uh, let's keep it over at Valley. Talk about the the girls' golf. Uh, you know, they just continue to uh, you know keep doing good things over there. Yeah, uh, I was talking with yeah. I saw them play the other day, and uh, it's tough. They didn't play, uh, you know they didn't really play very well, according to Coach Thad Malad. He said they're kind of in a rut right now, and. Well, Maconaqua took advantage, and they won it. They beat. They won a three-way three-way match against Valley and Rochester the other day at Round Barn. You know that, that's impressive because that's Rochester and Valley's home course, and you come in as a road team and you win that. Mm-hmm. Match uh, Maconaqua one seventy four, Valley one ninety one, Rochester two hundred three. Uh, so you know that's the Maconaqua team. Obviously, they were ready to go. I mean, that was a, you know they lost to Valley last year in the TRC tournament, mm-hmm. so. They were. I'm sure they had their you know their antenna for that one, especially coming off a long. Yeah, that might have, been, might have been their first opportunity. Yeah. Did they get any golf in before they? Because uh, I know they started earlier, obviously. Yeah. If if they did, it was it had been it was their first match in a month. Yeah. Yeah. Competitive match again. I don't know if they had been out in the course playing or if they had, they'd been allowed to. Right. Um, but they've got you know they had one girl with a forty two and two girls with forty threes. Madeline Weaver led Valley with a forty five, but uh, you know I think Caden Smollett at a forty eight, Molly Moriarty and Cheney Cannon at a forty nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Lily all had a 56, but and Valley brings back their whole team from last year, mm-hmm. but just struggled a little bit. Uh, it was fun, I, you know. I was kind of watching Madeline Weaver and Ava Thomas and their group. Uh, boy, Madeline hits the ball straight every time. Mm-hmm. I mean, off the tee, she is such a good player. And I was talking with Coach Thad Malad, and he goes, "Yeah, Madeline plays about f- way more golf than anybody else on our team. She's really the polished player." Mm-hmm. And the other the other girls are kind of athletes who are athletes who play golf. Madeline mm-hmm. is a golfer, mm-hmm. you know. Right. But this is yeah, it's, it's you know, I mean, still it's a good team. I mean, Cheney Canada is consistently under fifty now. She's a much improved player. Cadence is, you know, she's she's been playing pretty well. Molly Moriarty had a forty two the other week, so it's pretty it's pretty good. You know, two three four is really kind of almost interchangeable at Valley, mm-hmm. and uh, so it, it's a good team. Then you know, Lil, you know, Lily Ald. I mean, she was the key to them winning conference last year. So she's she played five the other day, but she could, you know she can come up and play well too. Mm-hmm. So nice balance on this team. So you, and Cheney Canada is the only yeah. senior. I mean, the, yeah. uh, it seems like we've been covering them for a long time, but they're still mostly juniors. Yeah. So you talk about that Rochester team in that three way. How have they been doing? Uh, you know, two hundred three is about an average score for them for nine holes. Um, they, you know, they they want to get, you know, Coach Thomas wants to get in the the one nineties or the one eighties. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Peyton Moore and uh, Ava Thomas have been just solid all year, but it's the three, four, five. You know, Delaney Barkman's, uh, and you know, Kat Rensberger's, you know, getting her score down recently. She's been pretty reliable, right around fifty. You know, Delaney Barkman's been that in that number four spot, solid. And the number five spot has been kind of rotated around. Avery Broyette seen some time there. Savannah Eccles has seen some time there. Uh, you know, Avery is getting more varsity playing time. Reagan Becker has been getting some varsity playing time. So it's just, uh, you know, who's gonna who's gonna fill that role? Uh, it's gonna be com- kind of comp- competition within the team. Yeah, moving forward. Uh, moving over to the Hoosier North Conference, uh, Winnemac, and then I, I saw a um, picture from Pioneer. They had uh, picked up some some numbers. I think. Do they have a full team yet? Uh, none that we know. Of. We know that Ashlyn Brook has been playing pretty well, mm-hmm. and then Emily Schmaltz. I don't know if they've got if they can have a, a full five. I haven't heard that yet. Okay. Uh, for, I, had not, all I the saw, report, I saw all the report, four in the picture, so I don't know if they were all golfers though. All the reports say fewer than five, yeah. so they don't okay. have a full team yet, or fewer than four. You can have, you know, a full team with four, mm-hmm. so they have no more than three. Mm-hmm. We haven't, so that's all we know of them. But right now, yeah. uh, you know, Winnipeg, you know, they won the Hoosier North last year. They would appear to, and they appear to be better in all respects this year. When you talk about their 
they're kind of their big three with Kira Businski, uh, Bianca Huizar, and Janet Calfee. Mm -hmm. And the sophomore has really improved. Olivia Link. Mm -hmm. uh, Culver's and her, her twin si her sister Piper. Right. She's playing volleyball. She's playing well on the volleyball team. We should give her a shout out. As well. Right. Uh, Culver have a full team. I know they yeah, were. Yeah. Yeah. AJ Hines, uh, Sylvia Rodriguez. Uh, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, Covered a tough loss against North Miami mm -hmm. uh, the other night, but uh, they, they do have a full team. Yeah, okay. Just in that tough Laporte sectional where they're going to have to battle a lot of bigger teams. Yeah. Where do they golf at now, Culver? Max and Cucky Country Club. At the Country Club. Mm -hmm. I was wondering. I know they, I think they used to golf there, and then when Mystic opened up, they, they used it. And, of course, now it's it's not there anymore as far as public goes. So they're back to the Country Club. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, that'll uh, that'll wrap up some uh, golf and tennis talk. Uh, let's uh, take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk uh, some soccer, and I think that'll wrap us up, right? I want to yeah. talk some cross country too. We got oh, a big yeah, weekend coming up. Yeah. So we'll talk cross country and soccer when we come back. Mm -hmm. So we'll be back here in just a moment talking sports with Val. In your true value has everything you need to get your next project done. Located on 1619 Main Street in Rochester, Inyard's True Value provides a variety of tools and supplies from trusted brands such as DeWalt and Milwaukee to accomplish even the smallest of jobs. Call 574-223-4920 or visit www.truevaluecompany.com. RTC Fiber Communications knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact RTC Fiber Communications. Connect to the internet speed that suits your journey and enjoy the ride. And welcome back here. We're talking sports with Val and the final segment here, we're going to talk cross country and soccer. We're going to mix things up. We like to keep you guessing, and that way you can watch the whole show. That way you don't, uh, you know, fast forward just to the, uh, you know, part about the sport you want to listen to. You gotta, you gotta watch this all the way through. So uh, let's let's talk cross country first. We got a, a big weekend coming up. You got some uh, some pretty good tournaments. Uh, you said casting the the big casting invite is right. this weekend. Always the Saturday before Labor Day. Yeah, that's uh, you know that we'll see how that goes this year. Obviously, last year it was really weird uh, because of the fan restrictions, so should be back to uh, somewhat normal this year. Yeah, and uh, we've got uh, you know Pioneer will be there, and the Pioneer boys won the Cass County meet at Logansport last week, so. We'll see what they do for an encore. This is a Pioneer team that's kind of a pack team, mm -hmm. but ran really well. Um, you know, when you talk about uh, uh, Jackson Baker, he was second overall at the Cass County meet behind another local runner. Austin Dake from Cast and won it, mm -hmm. but Jackson Baker was second overall. Leighton Dot was in the top ten. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Carson Meyer was in the top ten. Jack Cooper was in the top ten. And you got the freshman Austin Brook. He was like eleventh, so it's mm -hmm. kind of a nice pack team at, at Pioneer. Yeah, and doing a really good job there. And a lot of those kids you're mentioning are are young, right? Sophomores right. And, and freshmen. Yeah, so it's it's a pretty young team, but this is you know that's a really good sign. You know, can this Pioneer team maybe make it to regional? Uh, they'll you know they got a lot of work ahead of they mm -hmm. get some work ahead of them, but there seems to be the raw raw material there to, for, to be able to do that. Yeah. And uh, you know their girls team, they're they're not quite as deep from one to five, but uh, you know Violet obviously yeah. uh, leads the pack there. She, she was second at the Cass County meet behind uh, McKenna Light of Lewis Cass, who mm -hmm. won it. And then the number two runner at Pioneer is a girl we know very well, Kylie Ferris. Mm -hmm. uh, she she ran I think in the twenty fives the other day, so she's yeah. So but again, uh, numbers not quite as good for the girls as the boys team, but you know Kylie ran pretty well at the Cass County meet as well. Yeah, I think top twenty. Yeah, 
And you mentioned uh, Caston uh, with Dag winning the uh, the Cass County. Right. Uh, their numbers are a little bit lower, I think, this right. year than normal. And Edison Byram hasn't run yet this year, and that's been the issue. We, mm-hmm. they got to get Edison out there. He's one of the most talented runners in the year. I, I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know why he hasn't been running. I can get We can guess, but we don't know why. But if they get him to go with Dig, that'll give him a really good one-two. Mm-hmm. And then you had the other guys. I mean, Caleb Stinson, uh, he's very solid. Brady Evans... Uh, both Caleb and Brady are doing soccer and cross country. They've mm-hmm. been busy guys, and then uh, Al, you know Alex Craig is another guy who's you know gives them some depth. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a it's it'll be it'll be, it'll be a competitive casting team just like they all are. But yeah. uh, again, they got to get Byron back. Uh, that'll that'll really solidify them. Max Summers is another kid who's been running kind of in the kind of toward the back of the pack, yeah. uh, but is you know kind of part of that secondary pack of casting. Yeah. Uh, you also have another uh, big meet coming up this weekend on Saturday at Manchester, right, and probably right. a lot of our TRC teams yeah. will be in that. Again, Argus, Caston, Culver, Pioneer, and Winnemac, they go to Caston this week. Rochester and Valley, they go to Manchester, yeah. and this is going to be uh, this is gonna be an interesting meet. Uh, again, it's, it's the first really big meet the Zebras have had. Of course, it's their first meet of any kind they've had in two weeks. They were supposed to go to North Miami. That, got, that meet got canceled because of the heat. Right. And we're expecting... Much milder temperatures this week. Yeah, probably, yeah, it feels good. <laughs> be in the probably about mid sixties. Yeah, when the gun goes off, those, and, those runners like that. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. So uh, I'll be curious to see what these Rochester boys do for an encore after a really impressive showing of the zebra invite. Mm-hmm. You know, Chris Rohr won it. Dylan Steininger and uh, was third. Peyton Hyatt was fourth. West Steininger ran really well. It's now can they get that? Now, can they bring along that fifth guy? Mm-hmm. You know, when you talk about Reese uh, Johnson, uh, he's you know he he's a kid, he's a freshman, but he's kind of got he's got the potential. If they can bring him along and be that fifth guy, then that that'll really help things out as well. But I think all, I think the top four, the two Steininger brothers, uh, Hyatt and Roar, I think they can all be in the seventeens by the end of the year, and I think that's the hope. Mm-hmm. Again, he, do, I, I would not pay too much attention to the times from the zebra invite. Mm-hmm. I mean that was just unbearably oh, hot yeah. and a really hilly course. <laughs> this Manchester course, that's you know again, this is where the sectional is going to be. So you really want to uh, pay closer attention to the times at, at this meet. Yeah, and it's going to be more. Well, I mean, towards that, what that temperature will be when you get into that sectional. I mean, yeah. a lot closer to it than it was yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah, and then you know Rochester. I mean, you know Zoe Seward. She was so good at that zebra invite. I mean, mm-hmm. ran, again, ran in like twenty one nineteen. Uh, you know she'll get her time down again in just more normal conditions, more mm-hmm. bearable weather. Uh, obviously, they're, they're still going to be without Madeline Callaway and, and our Aselio Ochoa for a while, but there's still some talented runners uh, here. You know, girls like uh, you know Maddie Heinzman and, mm-hmm. and and so forth. So you know, I I don't know. I believe Kendall Bradley will be running, and you know Kendall was I think she ran like something like twenty three oh five at the zebra invite. That was, was again a really good time, mm-hmm. given the circumstances and given that she's playing soccer. Mm-hmm. But Kendall looked really good. She's only going to get better as the season goes on. So that this is a team with some talent and runners on it, but it's just it's going to take a while. Do we know? I know obviously Callaway's out probably t- uh, till late in the season. Do we know if uh, Ochoa is going to be? The hope uh, is to have available? her back by New Prairie. Okay. That's September eighteenth. So, yeah. So a little more than two month. weeks, at least two more weeks out. Mm-hmm. Okay. But uh, they're gonna have to be kind of careful because that stress fracture has been kind of nagging her off and on for almost a, ten, eleven months now. Do, are they doing the academy invite this year? They are. They are doing that. Yeah. And that's the week after or week before? That's the week after. Week after. September twenty fifth. Okay. I knew they were back to back. I just couldn't remember which order. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, this this Saturday is kind of it's it's all I don't. Know, I want to say it's the start of the season. It's kind of the these are the first really big beats. Sure. You know when you're talking about you know dozens of teams and mm-hmm. whole whole big stampedes and this is when the season gets fun. I guess you'd say. Yeah, yeah. There's normally what about twenty twenty five teams at Caston. I mean it's yeah yeah. You know, and then they, they do junior high and and high school there. So yeah yeah yeah. Usually, I think three high school races. They do a girls and then a JV boys and a varsity boys. I mm-hmm. think and, mm-hmm. and then the junior high. So, yeah. pretty good meet. Mm-hmm. Um, Manchester about the same. I would say. Yeah, yeah. You get uh, teams from Fort Wayne coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, nice, nice kind of mix of your team. I think it's even a couple of teams from the region come all the way to Manchester. So it's a nice oh, really? mix of teams. Yeah. Wow. 
It's a little bit of a yeah. hole. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, yeah, a couple teams from the south come from south. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of a nice geographical mix of teams. I always, uh, always would sit there in the front porch. You know, when when we lived on State Road Ten, even between Culver mm-hmm. and Argus, I would always sit there on the front porch that day that the uh, Academy meet. You know, and just marvel at you know some mm-hmm. of the different buses that were going by and yeah, you know, like, Evansville and you oh, got yeah. Columbus and you, I mean, just everywhere in the state. Oh yeah, the the Academy meet. They get kids from Ohio. Mm-hmm. They get kids from Illinois, yeah. from the suburbs of Chicago. I mean, usually you see some of those go by on Friday night. Yeah, yeah. suburbs of Cincinnati. I mean, they they come yeah. from all over the place for the Culver Academy meet. Yeah, yeah. Second largest is New Prairie bigger. I think. New Prairie's bigger. Yeah, yeah. over a hundred schools. But Culver Academy is right up there too. Yeah, so. Yeah, it would just be nice to be able to have those again. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, with fans. Mm-hmm. So. We should mention, give a shout out to Chesney Miller, sophomore at Valley. Mm-hmm. 2040 the other day. Nice. At the Northfield Invite, new school record for uh-huh. girls, breaking her own school record. Right. 2059 last year. Yeah. Chesney's going to break that record several more times. Several more times. That record is going to be all hers. Yeah. By the time she graduates, she's only a sophomore and she's a great runner. But uh-huh. Valley does not have a full team of five. Their boys don't have a full team of five yet. But we should give a shout out to Evan Myers, who's been running pretty well, too. Mm-hmm. And for the Winnemac girls, I mean, they've, they've been running really well. Uh, you know, I wanted to give a shout out to, you know, there's a girl game, Cadence Who, right? I must admit I haven't seen her run before, but she's been running really well. Um, Kelsey Wegner, Ariana Guadalajara, Bethany Poor, Kate Collins. Kate Collins hasn't run yet again. I don't know why. Again, we can guess, but I, I don't know why Kate hasn't run yet. But mm. when she does run, that'll give them a solid runner. Maggie Smith has actually been the front runner mm-hmm. all year. Yeah. So this is a really talented Winnipeg team. Another young team, but they had uh, a lot of success last year. Yeah, I mean they made it to regional last year, uh, and I think you know semi state's not not out of the question for them yeah. this year. They're a talented team. It brings back most everybody. Yeah, I think it was kind of a shock, you know, how well they did last year. I don't think we kind of really expected that, did we? Yeah, because they were just so young, and we didn't yeah. know much about their freshmen. But yeah, yeah. all those girls are sophomores now, and they're good. Yeah. The Winnemac boys, too, we need to give a shout-out to uh, Colby Wegner, Kelsey's older brother, mm-hmm. and Christian Cardenas. He's another kid who's playing soccer and cross-country. Okay. Uh, two really nice runners for them. Well, it's a uh, good segue, right? Let's talk uh, soccer. So, um, you know, you, you talk start with Winnemac because you want to talk about them a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, they, I think two years ago, Winnemac won one game. Mm-hmm. This year, they, you know, last year they won seven games. This year they've already won two games. They beat... You know, they went 7 to nothing over uh, Lakeland Christian the other night. You know, Thomas Fearens had two goals. Jacob Housinger had two goals. You know, Alex Stark had a nice game. Uh, who am I forgetting here? Oh, yeah, Mitchell Mitchell Bennell had two goals in that game. So this is a Winnipeg team that's doing really well for Coach Burton. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they had a tie with Peru the other night uh, where they, you know, that was kind of one of those where they, they really felt they could have won that. I mean, they outshot mm-hmm. them and had more possession. But, you know, it, it's a really improved Winnipeg team. And, you know, you look at their at their sectional again. We, somebody's got to win that sectional. Caston, mm-hmm. Culver, Winnemac, North Miami. One of those four teams is going to win a sectional. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think what this is a Winnemac team that's you know really improved quite a bit just in the last year or two. Yeah, Culver's had their struggles on the boys' side. Up yeah, there. They, yeah, they really have. They're mm-hmm. just struggling numbers wise. They lose to North Miami the other day, five to nothing, in kind of an early kind of sectional preview. Uh, so just. Uh, you know, Coach Levette, you know, he's a guy who really just built that program up last year, but it's, again, it's just a numbers thing that you're kind of worried about there, yeah. especially in these times. Yeah. Um, you know, the Culver girls, uh, we're going to see them here coming up Thursday night. They're going to be taking on Rochester. They've had uh, a decent start to their season. Yeah, you know, they had a couple tough losses, but they've really bounced back well. You know, they, they, you know, they've, um, they beat Washington Township the other night, four to nothing. Um, they've got, you know, really three or four multiple scoring options when you talk about the two Hamilton sisters, Kaylee and Maddie. Mm-hmm. When you talk about Casty Banks, who's really been coming on. When you talk about Giselle Villegas. So they've got you know four or five girls who can score. I mean, that's great. And, you know, defensively, they're, they're doing... I mean, they possess the ball so much that their, their goalies aren't really being overworked. Uh, this is a nice team. They're pretty athletic. They're pretty... You know, they're, they're not going to over... You know, they're pretty quick. And so... And they they they're pretty fun to technically sound, you know. And that's gonna be an interesting matchup against a, a Rochester team that's also kind of a pretty athletic team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you mentioned uh, you know athletes. You got some girls that, with Rochester that just really started playing soccer again. Haven't played for a, a long time, like Emma Hadashell, but uh, yeah. 
they they seem to be uh, figuring some things out. Yeah, I saw them play against Peru last week. They looked great. They went eleven and nothing, but then they bounce. Then they come back and they lose to Logansport three to one. Emma Houdishell had four goals in the Peru game, and she scored the only goal in the Logansport game. And uh, you know, she just looks like a born soccer player for a girl who hadn't played since. She said, "I said, how did you wind up playing soccer?" She goes, "Somebody challenged me to do it." Mm. And they challenged some of the other girls like. Uh, Callie Watson and Kennedy Jackson and Millie Scorsone to try out for soccer. Mm -hmm. So they did, and they're, and they're doing well. Um, you know, Lily Eaton has been a key part of this team, I mean, as kind of that center mid, mm -hmm. center midfielder role. Um, but they, you know, they've got, you know, the back row is pretty solid when you talk about Kendall Bradley. I mean, she's just everywhere. She can go from sideline to sideline. And then Mackie Leslie is another really solid defender, and with Kaylee Woods, you got one of the best goalkeepers in the area. So, I think preventing goals will be is going to be this team's strength. But you know they're coming off a three-one loss to Logansport. We'll see if they can get back going in the right direction against Culver. Right. That uh, I will have that game. Uh, I think I'm going to be able to have it live yeah. on Thursday night. I'm going to try it. Hopefully, we'll see how the weather is. Yeah. Billy Pesic, you know, she's another girl who can score. She's yeah. another. You know, really athletic girl, and then the two Nelson sisters, Macy and Brooke. You yeah. know, again, this team is. I, and Chantal Rensberger, you know, I asked her about this, and Chantal Rensberger agreed. She goes, ultimately, if you got, if you want to win big, you know, you're gonna have a good athletes, and mm -hmm. this team is as, you know, they, they don't get knocked off the ball like they mm -hmm. used to. I mean, they're knocking the, their opponents off the ball. Right. If they if they want it, they go out and get it, and so uh, you know that's been what's impressive. But I must admit, I didn't, I kind of wasn't expecting the Logansport game. That was kind of a disappointment. I would yeah, imagine. and it's yeah. hard to say. You know, maybe uh, you know they they've not historically been the best team that are around mm -hmm. in Logan Sport, but uh, you never know from year to year. Maybe they've uh, put some things together. So right, I mean they're a team that Rochester has struggled beating over the years. So mm -hmm. yeah, so we'll have uh, Rochester Culver. Right, uh, but the, 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 you know the, the the three you know the big games ahead for Rochester in their schedule are of course Argus mm -hmm. and Manchester. Right, you know Manchester is just. They're the team that's. It's either going to be them or Rochester in the conference, seemingly. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Argus, who of course has just dominated their sectional over the years. Rochester's not only never beaten Argus, but they've never scored a goal against them. So. Right. Well, let's talk about Argus because mm -hmm. uh, you know they've got a big game coming up on Saturday. They're going to be hosting Warsaw. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you don't get much bigger than literally mm -hmm. bigger than Warsaw. So they've they've been uh, they've had a few struggles. Uh, yeah, it hasn't, been, it hasn't yeah. been easy. Uh, they're five one and one, so I don't think there's. Re I don't know if you're too worried at this how point. Do you, how do you look at five one and one and say they're struggling, but they they kind of have a right. little bit. Lost to John Glenn two to nothing. That was their yeah. first loss on Saturday at the Argus Invite, and that was kind of a disappointment because I think everybody was kind of looking forward to that game, and mm. for them not to be able to put a goal on the board, that was a bit surprising because they have so many weapons with Lily Hines and Ariana Allen and Emma Dunlap. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't know if they have a whole. You know, do they have a whole lot of scoring weapons besides that? I don't know. Uh, Lizzie Edmonds has been playing great in goal. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this team's got a lot to ahead of it to win. Uh, but uh, yeah, just dis disappointing. Now they had, you know, I think they I think they just played so many games in a short period of time, and they had to play two games in hot weather. I know they they moved the move the schedule around to play that those games. You know, after the hottest part of the day in the late afternoon, early evening. But mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that maybe that was the issue. They played seven games in a pretty quick span of time I don't know yeah but now they get a week now they've had a whole week to prepare for this Warsaw game so let's see what I'm curious to see what kind of energy they come out with right and I I don't know you know much about Warsaw they they generally have pretty good teams mm -hmm. but obviously with the numbers I mean you you would think that they normally have you know a lot of girls coming at you too yeah so yeah. Uh, let's just uh, Let's stay up at Argus. Uh, talk about the boys. You know, kind of uh, they've kind of had a little bit. And you talk about five one and one for the girls being a struggle. The boys actually are struggling. Yeah, uh, this has been. Yeah, I mean, things are starting to turn around slowly. They're back up to two and two, and they haven't a lot of goal in their last two games. You know, beating. You know, the Faith Christian team is a team you can't overlook. I mean, mm -hmm. they, you know, I mean they they beat them two to nothing. Faith Christian always just seems to give them fits. Mm -hmm. But they won that game two to nothing, scored two goals within the first ten minutes, and then held on from there. And then a really nice showing the other night against Lavelle, six to nothing. Mm -hmm. Teddy Redinger had a hat trick. This is a good team uh, that's just uh, kind of finding their way a little bit. But uh, you know, surprising that 
uh, you know, again, Vladimir Bernard, I don't know much about him, but he had three assists the other night. So, again, uh, scoring was maybe the problem earlier in the year, but I think they're starting to, again, you know, the schedule is going to be tough and it's going to be, you know, give themselves a challenge, which is, of course, what they really need to do now in 2A. But, yeah, a bit up and down. They got a uh, big game coming up next week against Plymouth. Yeah. And that's always Ooh, a huge boy, rival. Plymouth, yeah, always a good rivalry game, and Plymouth is always really good. I mean, they are fast, and they move the ball fast. Mm -hmm. But uh, those types of games will help get them ready. Yeah. They're going to have to uh, get used to playing those size schools. Yeah. And those size players. Mm -hmm. um, around the horn, then, uh, soccer-wise, we talked Culver, we talked Argus. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? Well, Caston and Tippecanoe Valley played to a 2-2 tie last Thursday, and that was a nice show of progress for Valley. Because remember, Valley, it was the second time they played this year. Mm -hmm. Valley lost the first meeting 4-2 at home. This time they traveled to Caston and get a tie out of it. So that was a nice showing. Mm -hmm. you know, John Ruiz has been playing really, really well. Caleb, you know, Caleb Petkins, another solid player. Gio Ariaga is a very good player. Now, after that tie with Caston, which was a sign of progress, then Valley you know, they host Manchester and the Squires, who have been a, just a solid, solid team for mm -hmm. a long time. Manchester beats them 8-1. to one. Mm -hmm. And so a kind of a disappointing follow-up. But, again, Coach Luce's team will, you know, they're, they're always going to be fundamentally solid. Uh, just, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, you, you worry about them getting kind of knocked off the ball. But, again, Manchester's always so good. Um, I'm, not, I, you know, I'm not too worried about Valley scoring goals. It's preventing goals mm -hmm. moving forward. And then for Caston, you know, they've, uh, you know, they had to go to Frankfurt, and, uh, you know, they lose to Rochester. And they go to Frankfurt, they lose a couple games there. Uh, this is a team that, you know, with Rowan Jellison and uh, the freshman, John Aguilar-Mendez, I mean, they're it's a pretty talented team, Jonathan Pacheco. I mean, it's, I, think, I think they're a pretty skilled team. And then in the back row, you know, the two Zyder brothers, Cade and Talon, are playing very, very well. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, Caleb Stinson and Brady Evans are doing a nice job kind of back there as well. I think this is a more athletic, one of the more athletic casting teams I've seen. Yeah. I was, I was impressed with the way they played against Rochester, and, and like you said, you know they have a, a winnable sectional at home. So yeah. you know if they can just keep improving throughout the season and, and get to that point. Yeah, and again, it's hard to judge them by the Frankfurt tournament. That was two games in one day and awful heat. Yeah, it was just a little warm. Yeah, just a little. Yeah, when when you're when your team that doesn't have a ton of numbers, right. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't get too worried about that, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a team that uh, I, I think will get better as the season goes on, and especially as they get into conference play. Yeah. Well, uh, anything else you want to... Well, Rochester, I saw them play against Oregon Davis last Saturday. They won 8 to nothing, and, uh, you know, you, you can tell that Elmer Rugg, you know, we, I know we saw them play Cass. I know you, we both remarked about, especially you remarked about how they look, resembled Argus. I think they're even, they're even getting more that way. Sure. And, uh, you know, they, it's just a really... It, you know, you, you can tell that Elmer Rook, he might only be 27 years old, but he is a wise old soul about the game, and he mm -hmm. knows how he wants the game to be played. Yeah. And he's gonna, he's not going to stand for anything less than that. And, yeah. uh, you know, he goes, the, the, he goes the, the practices have been really tough, but in a lot of ways it's these practices that get you ready for the games. Um, they've been working a lot on passing. And I was talking with Lane Bax, he goes, he goes yeah, I asked him about that. He goes, Coach Rook said you've been passing a lot. He goes, oh, yeah. And he goes, the, the, one of the side benefits of that is it helps us get in really good shape because mm -hmm. we're just passing, 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 and moving the ball so fast. So Coach Roke is really emphasizing tempo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they had a great game, and he does as good as Zach Pickens is, and he scored 30-plus goals last year, and he's got a whole bunch of goals so far this year. He, he doesn't want it to be all on Zach's shoulders. Sure. where Because, I mean, teams were just beating on him last year, and he, he wants the the offense to be spread around a little bit, and that's taking some time. Uh, but, you know, Lane Backus has scored. Uh, Braden Crum has scored a goal, uh, scored a goal in that Oregon Davis game. Uh, the other, you know, the other guy who's really come on lately has been uh, Aiden Smith. I mean, he's, you know, he, you can tell he's, you know, we saw him in basketball last year. He looked like Aiden's put on, got a couple inches tall and put on some, some bulk there. He, he, you can't push him around either. So mm -hmm. this is a team that's, this. It's really developing in terms of their style of play and how they want to play. Mm -hmm. 
But again, they beat OD and then a very frustrating loss to Wabash the other night. I mean, they're up 2-0. Two yeah. goals by Pickens pretty early. Again, he's, he scored, what, 13 seconds in the game against Cassie. He scored 26 seconds in the game against Wabash. Sure. Then he scores another goal. They're up 2-0. And then Wabash ties it 2-2. Two -two. Uh, Jude Brooks scores to put Rochester up 3-2. And then Wabash scores with, like, six minutes left to tie it. And then scores with, like, two and a half minutes left in the second overtime to win it. Yeah. So a very tough home loss, especially in conference. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just... It'll be hard to come back from that. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially when you talk about, you know, you have to play Manchester later. I mean, the Wabash was the one you really were counting on winning. Mm -hmm. Remember Wabash beat Rochester beat Wabash three to nothing at Wabash last year. So that's a tough one. Um, you know, we'll see how Rochester can bounce back from this game. But the interesting quote was from when I asked Elmer Roke. I said, uh, "How would you rate the camaraderie and togetherness on this team?" And he goes, "Maybe the best I've ever had on any team that I've been associated with." Wow. And I was I was shocked by that. He's been with a lot of teams. He's been with a lot of mm -hmm. good teams, with a lot yeah. of winning teams. And for him to talk about the chemistry yeah. that this team has, that really that really struck me. Yeah. So they were supposed to play John Glenn tonight. That got canceled. They originally were supposed to play back, I think, what, August 14th? Yeah. Early. And uh, it got moved back from, I think there was some Glenn issues mm -hmm. there. And then tonight's, I guess, they couldn't find any refs. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that might be just canceled altogether at this point. But um, yes. So they they don't have a game tonight. I think they're off until next week at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, but uh, Zach Pitt, he, he had a goal against Oregon Davis. That was something. He he took a throw from the goalie and he just it was like a Pac Man. I mm -hmm. mean, he just was kind of he just drove through the whole the whole defense like they were traffic cones and then yeah. beat the goalie. It was something. Yeah. Huh. But again, Coach Rook does he doesn't want too much of that. Yeah. I mean, he, he he knows what Zach can do. Right. It just he wants to develop those other players. Right. right. Anything else? I think that's it. Yeah. All right. So we got uh, we got some soccer coming your way. We'll have Caston in Rochester uh, on Thursday night. Uh, you may already be done by the time you see this. We'll have uh, Whitco and Rochester football on Friday night from Whitco. Hopefully, um, we're going to do our best. I'm going to be up there, and we're going to do our best. It's yeah, a little iffy on the Internet up there, so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, we'll have that for you on Friday. If not, the worst-case scenario, we'll record it and, and get that for you the next day. But uh, that's the plan is to uh, to do that and possibly uh, possibly Argus and Warsaw soccer on Saturday. We'll see. I'm still looking for a cameraman up there, so our... Uh, our Argus people are uh, kind of busy with other things, and so if we can get a cameraman up there, we'll uh, we'll have that on Saturday. And then uh, you know, long weekend, everybody. I hope you uh, enjoy it. You got plans? I know you said your brother's coming back. You haven't seen him for several years. So yeah. Good to uh, get get together with some family and yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thanks for tuning in, talking sports with Val. One more thing, congrats to Pioneer and Winnemac High Schools for winning the IHSA Sportsmanship Award for the yes. last year's school year. Only 11 schools in the state won it, and two of them are in our area. Yeah. Pioneer and Winnemac, congrats. Yes, yes, congratulations. So hope you enjoy your long weekend, and we'll see you back next week with more talking sports with Val. Thanks for tuning in. The lawyers and staff of Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service for their clients, presently and for the future. From estate planning and trust, to adoption and family law, to appeals, probate, and more, Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. See a full list of services online at petersonwagoner.com. Rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! Yeah. <laughs>